Hey guys, it's me again. Um, this video is going to be more about me. It's a little bit more in depth about me. Now, in my long video, once again, sorry for that. Um, I said at one point there that I had a knee injury. Well, when I was ten years old, I um. I had friends over and we were all jumping on the tramp and doing tricks on it and jumping backwards off it and I was I was jumping pretty high and and my friend decided that he wanted to jump just as I jumped um, he wanted to land on me just as I jumped and you know how that slingshots you further or higher well it it made me bounce pretty high and instead of landing in the same spot because I was I like, well I got a fright I came down and my legs went in between the springs and the back of my knees whacked on the bars and my hamstrings and everything um, I hyper flexed and my feet touched the, the top of my feet touched the front of my hips so they um I'm surprised they didn't break or or dislocate but when I went to the hospital I had to be in a wheelchair for a little bit and they done x-rays there was nothing nothing wrong they said um, they said it was it was lucky um, and they said there was nothing wrong with them at all and then a few years later um, later I kept getting pains and things like that especially when it got cold or, or it was raining and yeah it, it was bugging me so much that eventually I went and got it checked and the um, the second time my my doctor he wanted to get x-rays done again so they got x-rays done again and found out that I had actually damaged the cartilage behind my knees especially my right knee my right knee see with the cartilage your knee is like that and the cartilage is supposed to be like that as well with just a smooth surface so that the kneecap can move around um, easily without without causing friction or anything like that um, Whereas my one, instead of going like that, the smooth, it goes spike. I actually have the spike and then it goes down. So I have a spike at the top of my um, cartilage and my right knee. And then recently I, well, probably about a year ago, I ended up having to do physio on it and that was quite hard especially when they had to do this massage behind try and rub behind the knee on the edges behind the kneecap and that that seemed excruciating pain right up my leg my leg would go like you know when you get that real bad pain and it's so bad that it runs right up your leg and 
causes you to basically collapse on the ground and you can't move it. You just can't because it hurts so much you don't want to move it. That's pretty much the pain except for sharp. Um, the main sharp pain was well, where they were massaging. Um, so yeah, that, that got pretty sore. And they done what they had done before that is I had a third x-ray and this time it wasn't to see my cartilage not just the cartilage but to see what was happening with my kneecaps because of it and I found out that I have patellofemoral syndrome which happens in a lot of athletes and accidents and with me it was both being being an athlete with martial arts and things like, things like that as well as running and my knee injury and yeah I found out yeah, that my kneecap instead of being straight in the middle and pointing straight out um yeah being flat in the middle my knee is angled where on the outer side of both knees my kneecap the cartilage is basically non-existent the the kneecap is actually touching bone bone is touching bone which shouldn't happen that's what's causing my pain and they call it patellofemoral syndrome and now I've started doing one extra stretch over what I normally do because I never used to and most people don't because they don't think about it what's happening with with the cartilage being damaged and everything is the kneecap isn't able to move correctly and there is like I've been doing splits I do split training which stretches the inner thigh then you've got the quad stretch and then you have your hamstring stretch but most people don't stretch the outer um, they don't it, it's a hard muscle to stretch really hard um, so hard in fact that I had to figure out a stretch of my own because the physio every single stretch they told me didn't work um, it wasn't stretching it enough and so I figured out my own stretch and I had to stretch the outer thigh it's the outer thigh muscle the fourth muscle that nobody thinks about or hardly anybody thinks about and not stretching that it shortened and it has aided in pulling my kneecap to the outside so I have to learn to stretch that one out and try and get it long and then slowly push my kneecap back into the middle and do that painful massage so it gets pretty sore but the thing is I can still do backflips, I can run around, I can still do kicks, I can still hit a bag pretty hard with a kick. Um, and I can still walk around fine. So I mean, it's nothing terrible, it just 
it causes me pain a little bit sometimes. And what's another thing about me that I can go more in depth about that I haven't told you? Oh, actually, forgot about that. When I first got this, um, damaged my knees, I, when I got home, I'd run around a little bit, but it would cause pain. It was sore to, it was painful to run. And I couldn't run fast anymore. I I couldn't walk um, very quick. It just it caused me so much pain. And then I started seeing this um, this old show on TV. Um, well, it wasn't on TV, Dad was watching an old recording of the old series of The Flash. And I started wanting to learn about him. So I read a lot of different beginnings for him and Flash, after a bolt of lightning, he shouldn't, shouldn't have been able to walk again, and he did, and there, I think in one of the later comics, there was one where he lost his speed for a bit there, and he couldn't walk, and it caused him pain too, but he kept fighting and fighting and fighting until he could run again and eventually his determination paid off and he ended up becoming the fastest man alive again and for me that stuck with me because no matter how much pain I'm going through I was going to keep pushing myself and now now I can I can run fast I still haven't been beaten in a running race um, I'm sprinter I'm a sprinter um, <laughs> and I can still jog for miles I I can and well like I said I can do a lot of acrobatics that like backflips and things that I never thought I would be able to do again and now I can because of that determination so for me Flash is the story of Flash he's He's an idol. He... Just that determination that pushed me. And... Yeah, um, well, a second thing, anyway, about me, is... What would a second thing be? Second, second thing be about me. Oh, the f well, yeah, I told you guys in my first video, I love gaming, and I don't really play first person shooters like COD or anything like that, I think there is probably only one that I really love and I can't wait for number two to come out, is Destiny, Destiny, uh, I love that game, um, I had a, I think 40 was the max level, 
in, in the first one until the next expansion then I think it went up but I didn't have the next expansion so <clears throat> on all of my characters I had all level 40 there was the I think I had my titan as a I think they're called sunbreakers and <clears throat> I had the storm version of the warlock um, and the the one with the shadow bow I can't remember the with the hunter and oh my favorite still isn't the bow my favorite for a hunter is the lightning sword class where you can dash around I still use that move the one where your melee makes you dash and I remember one game there was a was a entire group as well as they had one man up with a rocket launcher my mate took him out with a sniper rifle and I jumped in there and used my sword dance move my, my most powerful move and I just bladed them all and it looked so cool my mate recorded and showed me um, I wish I had the recording so I'd show you guys but I don't have that anymore because it was on my PS3 now I have a PS4 thanks to my girlfriend and um, yeah that, that was so cool and then um, I, I had the first Destiny and then I had oh no actually I think I no yeah no I had up to the Taken King that's it I didn't have the next one which was a bit of a letdown <coughs> Because I love that game. Another game that I enjoy um, enjoy playing is Final Fantasy series. Um, there are a few that I don't like, but my favourites were seven, eight, and ten. Oh, uh, and um, twelve with a van. Oh, with van. Sorry, not a van. With van. But those were cool. Now I occasionally play the online version. Um, I've, I've loved those series since I was little. Another series, another game that I really enjoy is... Oh, what's it called? Is Gran Turismo. I love racing games and I love MotoGP, I love the, the motorcycle racing games, Those I find those actually more fun than the car ones. I don't know what it is, I think it's just the sound, the sound of the bike. The only thing is, is I wish they would bring out a motorcycle racing game where you could full on modify everything on it like make your bike look unique like have a fuel tank that's got a spider on it or or rib cage on it and and on the front you could have like a dragon's head and stuff with the light coming out of its mouth or or snakes around the handlebars things like that and paint jobs and being able to do um, <clears throat> like neons like have neons running down bars and stuff like that not next to the engine but having it run down in certain places where the engine wouldn't over overheat them and, and things like that I reckon that would be cool but they still don't 
and I also like tactics games. I love tactics games like, um, well, Final Fantasy Tactics, Valkyria. Um, I didn't mind. I don't mind Valkyria too. I thought it was great, but so many people are like, eh, I don't like it. Um, they like Valkyria One, Valkyria Chronicles One, and yeah. Um, another shooter that I like is a third person shooter is Plants vs Zombies I have Plants vs Zombies too, but I don't have a PSN Plus account a PS Plus account um, so I can't play it online but the great thing about it is number one was a solo Number two is a split screen. So that's great. I can still play against my family and friends. So that's that's really cool. And of late I've been really liking Injustice and GTA five. Well, I used to play that a lot anyway. But I really like GTA five. I wish I could play it online. Cause oh the first time. I played it online, they gave me a free, I think it was a free day or or something like that, it was like a day or two, something, something like that, and there was this guy following me around and I was a bit iffy, I thought he might try and kill me, so and he was a lot higher than me like a lot a lot higher than me and <laughs> we went into the gun store and I went in there and I bought me a couple of guns and then when I got out of the store he was standing there and he wanted to try and shoot the gun seller, <laughs> the weapon seller, and he couldn't, I don't know why, he just couldn't, and so he decided, let's throw C4 on the door, so I stood way back, I didn't want to get, want to get hit, and he had his bike next to him, he, he walked back far enough where his bike was there, <laughs> And he, he let off his C4, and when he let off his C4, it blew up his bike, which killed him. And the jackass thought it was me, and decided, oh yeah, um, okay, I'll come back. And I saw him, and I thought, oh yeah, he's, he's fine. And so, and he just stood there, and he waved, and I was like, nah. So I walked off, I went to go and walk off, like I waved back and I went to go walk off and jump in my car. And he hit me in the back of the head with a baseball bat and killed me in one hit. Which is, because I was still level one, I think. Yeah, I was still at the beginning. And he, he was much higher because his stats I mean, he must have had higher strength or whatever. Um, and he hit me in one hit. So, when I came back, I jumped in a car and I was looking around for him. And he suddenly, came, I knew it was him. I could I could see him in my, um, when I clicked the right analog down to see behind me. And he drove and slammed into the back of my car and then drove back and then drove around me and smacked into the side of my car and then as he was driving and his car was much quicker but he was not a good driver uh, I cut in on the inside of this corner caught right up to him and ended up shooting my um, 
can't remember which weapon it was. It was just a machine pistol type of thing. I think it was like an Uzi or something. I can't remember. Um, and I started shooting at his car and killed him. Ended up killing him. And then as he was hunting around for me, just as he was about to drive his car straight into the side of mine, I disconnected. And so when I logged back on, the funny thing was, um, it still, I was still in that car and he was nowhere to be seen. <clears throat> so I don't know what happened there. It was, it was a bit of a funny thing. And then it disconnected. So yeah. Um, well, sorry, this is meant to be more about me rather than the games and the stories I was doing. Uh, <laughs> and, well, yeah, um, what's another thing about me? Oh, the first ever martial arts I got into, which was when I was 10, yes, it's, um, it's when... I started off my martial arts after I found out about my after I found out my knees were okay. Um, was Kempo, and I'd done that for a year, but then my um, martial arts teacher had to go back to his country. So that kind of I don't know, that, that kind of ruined things for me a little. <clears throat> and then not long after that, with um, my parents didn't know until recently, um, I started learning traditional Muay Thai, a traditional style of Muay Thai, because there are like hundreds of them. And I started learning a traditional version of Muay Thai from my friend's grandfather and they don't normally train people outside the family but to them I had become family and I felt honoured and they taught me quite a lot and I have done Muay Thai since well still around 10 I was like I, I was almost 11 so I've done Muay Thai for a long time I've, I still do it now and people when they see it they think brutal but it isn't really brutal it's actually it has beautiful beliefs with it if you actually look at the Waikū and Ramoi Look, look at those two rituals before the match when you see them lifting their knees and, and circling their arms around and, and doing the rocking and everything. If you read up about that, you'll realise that Muay Thai fighters are, are good people. They, we, we don't really want to hurt each other. There are some that they do, but most of us, the actual ones from Thailand or ones who have been taught the old ways, we don't want to hurt anybody. We just, we want to prove that our school is the better one. That's all. We just want to show that we have skills as well and just to honour our, our school. It's not really to hurt each other. We we actually pray that they don't get hurt before the match. That's what the Ramoy and all that is about. But if you want a bit more in depth, just search up Ramoy, which is I can't remember how Ramoy is spelled, but if you just write in R A space M U A Y it should correct it for you.
I think it might be R A M M U A Y, but I can't remember. And Waiku is, I think that's W A I and K R U. Yeah, yeah, but once again, they were autocorrect. Um, also, when I was little, I didn't really get a chance to spend time with my dad. He he worked like 70, 80 hour weeks, which was a really long hours, 13 hour days, and things like that. And, oh, a little baby. <laughs> and he would wake up before oh sorry. Wake up before we had to go to school. He'd wake up at around five thirty and leave here by six, six thirty. By the time I got up he was not home and by the time he got home, I was already in bed and crashed out because he didn't get home until close to 11 o'clock. Which, basically, I had no father for my childhood. Most of my childhood. And it sucked. It sucked. Um, and by the age of 10, well, yes, 10, again, I ended up with depression and I recently got diagnosed with depression but I'm trying to get through that because it's you don't want to live life sad you've got to get past that and forget about all the sad things just remember everything that makes you happy and do do random things that you don't normally do like for me this talking to you guys helps me you guys are my family as well I mean Team TG is my family as well and so that includes Brick Prince and, and Chris Bess and everybody else um, Um, and doing this it just it makes me happy and I hope that eventually I can start doing more exciting things for you guys so that you don't have to get bored also I'm trying to find something that will allow me to record my gaming so that I can actually start putting some gaming videos up for you guys and show you some of the things that I'm good at so anyway my I better bring this to an end my time is almost up so I'll see you guys in the next one and remember keep living happy Beta's.